All right, everybody, it's my great pleasure to welcome live here in Kansas City the great Neil Giraldo. He is a great guitarist, he's a great songwriter, he's a great uh, lot of things. And uh, Neil, thanks so much for the time, man. Thanks, I'm happy to be here. That's quite an intro. I'm not sure I'm great at all those things you mentioned. I try the best I can. No, no I, I appreciate it. You know, it's so funny. I, I was thinking, like, how do I want to start this story? Um, and the best way I can is that my my sister, I have three older sisters, I'm the baby of my family, mm -hmm. and she used to pick music solely by uh, who was on the cover of Teen Beat or Tiger Beat or one of those things. And, and her we had a common wall, and she used to drive me nuts with her music. And then finally, she brought this album home, and it was rock and roll, and it sounded great. And she loved it because uh, it was making her happy that uh, she could have some of her teenage female angst out. And I loved it because I was listening to you play guitar, man. So that was, you know, 1980, and have been a fan ever since. So thanks for putting a little bit of, a, you know, getting rid of some family strife in my household all those years ago. Yeah, I'm happy to help anyway I can. <laughs> so first of all, Neil, I want to congratulate you. Uh, love the bourbon, and you guys just won the Distillery of the Year Award, right, from Bourbon Finds. So tell me about that, man. That's cool. It's pretty interesting, yeah. Um, well, first of all, you know, in order to have success in anything, and, you know, and even in music, uh, unfortunately, you have to have the word business attached to music, the music business, right? So you have to put together uh, great teams, and everybody's got to stay in their lane. And, and I, I was just really fortunate to get a phenomenal team with uh, my Steel Bending Spirits, um, uh, Spirits Company, right? And the guys really work hard. And, and we're a disruptive company, which is kind of cool. And, and um my distiller, Master Distiller, has um, a really interesting background. And in a lot of ways, he, he really uh, it mirrors the way I make, write, create music, the way he blends and does uh, spirits. So we're a disruptive company in that way, in a good way. Um, and it, how it correlates to disruptiveness in my life and music is I've always challenged the audience. I'll, I'll, see, I'll go back and forth so you can get an idea how this crazy brain of mine works but there's a combination between the two right so i've always felt what the one thing i've always done and if you have the the, the the backstory of the music that i've made and things that i've done i've always tried to do things a slightly bit differently not not just to be you know trying to get cute with it but but i, I really i like to do things different i like to be disruptive in a positive way and i never uh, dumb down the audience. I've always tried to challenge everyone. Right, so that's right. the same thing with the spirits company. I try to challenge people and, and my team steps up and just, I'm really fortunate to have a great team. Well, it's such a great thing. You know, my, obviously my family comes first, but my guitar playing, you know, playing guitar is my second love, but I'm, I'm a big bourbon guy. So when I saw that you were doing this, I was like, Oh my God, he's, it's like a Vulcan mind meld. He's <laughs> mind the things I love, so. Well, here's another thing I chose bourbon for. Uh, I had an option to, to, to try something different, and there's a long story that goes before the reason why I started the Spirits Company, but I won't go into that right now. I may do a little snippet of it, but I want to encourage uh, conversation. You know, I, not that there's anything wrong with drinking tequila and jumping on tables and, you know, ripping clothes off and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I don't want to promote that. I want to promote conversation. Right. You know, people to sip, have conversation, you know, uh, respect the moment, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. You know, we, when I was in Scotland, I, I got, I went and met like a master class with scotch and that was such an illuminating thing about, it. it's not about pounding it. It's about savoring it. Right. Correct. And so, scotch is an interesting thing because it's all about blending. It's right. about blends, you know, and, and that's, and you know, the, the bourbon industry and whiskey, well, not whiskey, cause you can do a lot of different things, but bourbon industry had a snobbish thing about mixing and blends and stuff. But Scottish in, in the in the Scots and the in the Scotch whiskey, they, they've been doing it forever. Yeah, it was, it was just we're catching up. That's all. No, yeah, that's great. Well, wow. real quickly, I want to thank our sponsor today, uh, and she wanted to let you know uh, Becky Fankhauser uh, with Garage Door Apparel is our sponsor today, Neil, making this all possible. And she wanted me to tell you that the first album she ever bought was Getting mm -hmm. Nervous back in 1982. So she's oh, a as well. So thank you, thank you very much. I'm glad she's a did. drummer. And wow. she loved to drum along with it. So that's great. So uh, second off, you know, you've got this master class this, this Friday, correct? Seven o'clock central time. I'm in Kansas City, obviously. And uh, it's a benefit. So Neil, could you tell people about that and how they can sign up? 
Yeah. Um, and they can go to the website of the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, and then you just uh, enlist your thing. And I think it's $100, I think, to, to join the panel there. And 100% of the proceeds that I, I get, like I did last time I did it, go to unitedoutreach.org. It's the United Outreach Foundation. It's, it's located in Southern California, and it's, it's, a, it's a regional, not a national uh, company, and it really services uh, homeless and homeless teens you know, which kind of get ignored mostly yeah. as the other, the, you know, the elderly and, and older people, but uh, the teens, it's really important. And we got, uh, I'm a board member and it's, it's just a phenomenal organization. A really bunch of sweet, really good people. Really great people. Well, I'm really excited. I signed up. So you've got, oh, a, did. Oh, great. you've got a remedial, a remedial student, if nothing else. Right? <laughs> All right. Great. Great. I look forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's great. We do. The last time I did it, everybody had really great, interesting questions and uh, happy to answer everything. No, that's great. Well, you know, one of the reasons why I started this podcast, Neil, was I'm always really interested in the creative process. Yes. So I was thinking long and hard for you. And I guess the way I want to really word it is I want you to kind of talk about how it's the same and different in the creative process when you write a song, mm -hmm. when you put together a solo. Mm -hmm. And when you are mixing and, and recording and engineering an album, like what are the similarities? What's the differences? What are the approaches? I'm fascinated by this. And I know that you're big into this. So yeah, indulge. I, I, when I was a, a young man, about uh, 14, 15 years old, um, this girl that uh, lived near me, uh, she was a, a friend of mine, like a friend, not a, like a girlfriend, a uh, very sweet person, gave me a Yi Ching book, uh, uh, adapted by Wilhelm Baines and it became my Bible. And it's the thing I, I follow extensively throughout my life. So I, I take a lot of physical, there's a, um, I take a lot of uh, philosophical ideas into creating too as well. So I'll, I'll make it kind of simple. I believe everybody's a creator. Everybody can write, everybody can draw, everybody can create, right? To certain extent, right? So in order to, to really be efficient at it for me is it's a conduit so the, the biggest key is trying to open the conduit that's why your songwriting ideas come when you're in the shower when you're driving your car because your mind is going somewhere else and it allows that other side to open up and once that opens up you go also the the, the, the harder you try to execute something the further away you go so you, it's the same thing that a batter does when he gets in the batter's box after he's having a slump if he thinks work for one minute thinking ah oh, you know i haven't had a hit in 20 at bats you're done yeah so that's the that's the original side that's what happens unfortunately it's it's kind of a blessing that occurs for me because my mind is always open to me no matter what i see there's always a song idea or a script because i write them as well so there's always a creative writing thing going on in my head and it's bad because sometimes people can be talking to me and i'm listening but i'm not really hearing them <laughs> so unfortunately so so uh songwriting starts from a title usually and then it expands from there um mixing it, it, it just like anything you do it's it's gut stuff don't second guess i don't second guess it really is about how it makes you feel most importantly I remember there was this record by, oh, I, I'm going to say it was a John Lennon song on a solo record. And I, I'm pretty sure it is. And there's this drum fill that's absolutely awful. It's a terrible drum fill, really bad. So what did they do? Instead of turning it down, they turned it up. And by turning it up, it, it actually felt better. And people would always say, wow, do you hear that great fill? So, so there's no rules here. Um, there's no rules. That's the reason why rough mixes are usually your best mix because you're inspired. It, maybe it was after you did the vocal or maybe it was after you did a guitar part. The guitar is louder than normal, but maybe that's what it's supposed to be. So that's, that's part of the process that I take with that. It's, yeah. and, and solos are really an extension of a melody. It's yeah. something that I want people to sing along to. I don't want them to be bored during that break. That's not no. about Yeah. I love your solos because, you know, it's almost like a good book. It's got a great start. It's got a great middle and a great end, right? There's the three parts. And, you know, I, I wonder, I know you guys are Catholic and I was raised Catholic. And I swear to God, if you're Catholic, everything has to be in threes because, you know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? 
And right. Uh, I just think three is a powerful number. <laughs> I love the number three. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, I just love your solos are always, I mean, you know, it's funny when people ask about you and stuff and it's like, you know, you're not underrated to any guitar player. Every guitar player I know, man, we love you and your stuff and how well you play. And uh, it's always just a joy to listen to you. So, um, you know, I wish we had time to talk about all your albums, but I always try to like bring in a Kansas City connection. So I'd really like to talk to you about the True Love album because I read that you were really wanting to kind of do a Count Basie thing. Yeah. And even though Count Basie was not a native of Kansas City, he really cut his teeth here. Right. Uh, the Kansas City sound was such a huge part of jazz. Um, mm. And that's such a great, I love that album. You know, we listen to it a lot. We get the New York Times on Sunday when we put on albums and that's one of the one on the rotation. It's just a great album. So if you could talk to me a little bit about it, I, I'd love to hear about it and your thought process. Yeah, thank you. That was that was uh, probably, it was probably my favorite uh, album that we did. My favorite. It was done in about 13 to 14 days. Um, I brought the room full of blues uh, horn section in because I love the way they play. They're very back behind the beat. They really they are big and solid sounding. They really represent that big Joe Turner swing, Count Basie type sound. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that Count Basie had. He's one of my favorite of all time, him and Duke Ellington. I, I love them both. There's a great movie called Last of the Blue Devils. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. where they all joined in again and, you know, like they said, the Count, hey, Count, where's your boat? You know, because he has this, you know, hat. Um, so what I did is I wanted to, I wanted to record that record uh, ever since 1979. I, all, I kept saying every time I was getting ready to record, do a record, I said, like, why don't we do a swing, big band, big band, jump blues record. Record company go, ah, no, not yet. I said, okay. So eventually I got my way. It was right in, in a negotiation time with the record company. So it worked out well, right? So, yeah. And when I set up the, um, yeah, I'm writing a book too. So I go into details with a lot of these things and I won't touch on the details and stuff, but the thing, the sound I wanted was the Count Basie sound. In fact, the drums sound better in the piano mics. Right. Because the piano was in the room, an acoustic piano, a real piano. The yeah, drums sounded right. better in a piano than he did mic'd individually. My bass player was standing right next to the drummer. The drums sound great in the mic of the bass, too, as well. The horns were in the room. They all were in a circle. And uh, my engineer, I use, is Gordon For Forsythe. He, he was phenomenal. And um, when he when he put all the instruments, I said, set it up for me. I'll come in and take a listen. So I went to take a listen, and every every instrument had one mic on it, mm -hmm. and it sounded awful. I said, take it down. I only want to use six mics for the whole thing. Make it all work together. And he did. He did a phenomenal job. And that was that was the sound. Yeah. Record, so. That's just that whole era. You know, people forget that. I mean, and then just the power of a big horn brass section in your music. It's just it blow. I mean, it's physically pushes you a little bit it's such a cool thing my dad was a big band guy so i've always just dug it a ton so oh it's so it's so uh it it, it swings like buddy johnson is strong great swing stuff jay mcshan I, I mean it goes on big joe i mean the record big joe did with the room full of blues who was mm -hmm. I, I thought was spectacular you know i really did i thought it was great and big joe is just the greatest you know so. Yeah, and you guys were kind of on the vanguard. You were like the first, and then it became like this thing that everybody was doing. Brian Setzer was doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it became a huge thing in the 90s, right? And you guys like were the first to do it. And then like everybody yeah. jumped on board. It was, it, it was kind of funny because uh, this one producer, that I, boy, I wish I could remember his name. He's, he's a, he was a great one. I can't think of his name right now, but I remember him sending me a message somewhere. I can't remember what it was. He goes, he goes wow, I really love the record you made. I thought it was great, um, but it's it's a blessing and a curse because the blessing is I really love it, and the curse was he goes I think you're too early, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too soon. Yeah, so um, you know, so yeah, but but it, you know, you just you don't think about that stuff. You know, you just do it. You know, just do it because it feels right. You know, if it hits the right mark, great. If it doesn't, it's still a piece of work. Uh, it still documents a period of time. That's one thing that Neil Young, I really respect him for because he. He would make a record maybe every year, or every two years. It would just document that period of his life he was in at that particular time. He wasn't trying to achieve anything else other than capturing that moment. Right. 
you know. Well, and I, I read your wife's autobiography and lots mm-hmm. of things stood out about it, Neil. But the one thing is you guys did an album every nine months. That had while touring, that had to kill you guys. I mean, that's just yeah. nuts. Yeah, that was awful. Um, because yeah, that was a terrible, uh, unfortunately terrible management decision and record company um, wasn't good. But um, yeah, it's like a pregnancy. You know, every nine months you got to do another record or you go into suspension. That's how it worked. That's that's what they did to us. They says, if you don't do it, you're going to be sus- in suspension. Well, we don't want to be in suspension. What the hell does it, the suspension even mean? You know, be, I'm 23, 24 years old. What the hell does this mean, right? Right. So um, yeah, it, it really, it cut, it cut, I wish I had more time to to write more songs. I just didn't have the time. It was just too much touring. It was too fast. And, but no, it's it just exhausting just to read about it. I can't even imagine living it. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty weird. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things I love about you guys so much is that you always are like, you're, you're keeping busy. I mean, I love that you were on the American Idol and I'll tell you why. I always try to do research on people and kind of look, well, what, you know, what's all, and what the American Idol thing. So I was like, uh, it's on YouTube and, and I'm never going to say anything bad about any musician ever. I just won't do it. But the thing that made me literally laugh out loud was reading the comments. And the first comment said, Pat Benatar just won American Idol. And that just cracked me up because it's such a, I mean, it's such a skill set, that ability to be able to play live and command an audience. And I mean, you guys would have won American Idol if it had been in 1980. So how did you get involved with that? Yeah, it was just the, they've been trying to get us on the show for a long time. And I, we kept saying, nah, you know, not at this time. And we decided to do it. The, the the thing I liked about it, I, I I like helping people. I like teaching young people. They got the same glass. Pretty good. All right. I'd I'd even try that. Amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, they've been trying to get us on, and we decided we we're going to do it. But again, I, I really like teaching people. They ask me all the time. Young people ask me all the time. How do you do this? What do you think about this? And I really like, like giving them uh, help with the tools that they can use to do that. So. The thing about the show is you're, try, you're trying to, to make the audience feature the, the young person, not about you. So if you notice, I was trying to just kind of give it to her, let her pose, let her do a thing, let her play, let her sing. That's really what it's about. Um, they, they need to more focus on the, on, the, on the people rather than the guests. I yeah. Think. Well, you know, they're just trying to think, how, what's the hook? How do we bring in people my age to watch yeah. American Idol, right? That's, that's kind of how it works, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, 2020, Neil, what were you going to be doing? And I mean, obviously, everybody's world has been turned upside down. So what was the plan for you in 2020? And how different is it? And how are you adapting? I, guys, I know you guys did a single that was great and really was a comment on trying to be together and trying to forge to this together. So give me some background. Yeah, uh, actually... Uh, truthfully, it's not m- any different than my normal life. Um, I, I, I feel terrible for the people that got uh, locked out of making money, especially those musicians, because that's what I can relate to the most. That's why I have a big give back program with my spirits company. We used to, we were doing tip dryers for PayPal for uh, live performances that they can do because we have three court stages that I that I promote throughout the country where will pay for the act to play in a club in which the, the bar and club will support three chord bourbon and they'll get paid. The band will get paid. But then when the doors close and they lock and they can't afford to feed their themselves or their family, this is awful, awful. So when I talk about myself and my thing, it's not any different for me. And because, because I, I, I'm always writing, I'm always in a studio and I'm, on the studio right now just the other side of it the other part over here has all kinds of stuff so right. um so it hasn't really changed about except for the touring you know we would go out every summer and we tour for a couple months uh, but it, i i love being in the studio i mean if i if i could i would choose the brian wilson way yeah and stay in the studio record right and do all that and send the band out to, and then come back i mean even though i love playing live you know but I really feel for those people, those musicians and stuff. Uh, I just talked to a good friend of mine. He lost nearly fifty to sixty thousand dollars of his income from playing piano and doing live gigs. That's awful. That's a lot of money, and that is awful. Yeah. So, so we support. We have a music ambassadorship program too with uh, Steel Vending Spirits Three Chord Bourbon. Anybody that wants to find out about that, they can go to threechordbourbon.com to read about it. You know what an interesting thing too is because you're a musician and, and a, a guitar player and stuff. Do you realize that 
a lot of, uh, they have great blue societies all through the country. We support them as well. You realize that some of the greatest artists in history don't have tombstones? You know that Sun House didn't even have a tombstone? Yeah. You know, so this, this is, what what is going on? You know, what the, you know, like my little granddaughter, the baby says, she goes, what the, what the? <laughs> yeah, I love your post about your grandkids. I mean, oh. it's so sweet. I mean, every grandparent's the same, you're right? All the no same matter, thing. it's like the greatest joy in your life. There's just nothing like it. You know, my mom, and my mom was fair. I'm not trying to, you know, but my mom was tough, man. She was, and then she's just complete. My kids and my nieces and nephews, they can do no wrong. It's just great to see, so. Well, it's cool because, you know, having children is overrated. Having grandchildren isn't. <laughs> They're tough. Raising a child is difficult. Yeah, For I got two teenagers. Grandbabies, you know. <laughs> grandbabies are way different, man. I love them. Oh. I love my daughters too, of course. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take up too much time, but you know, uh, like you said, and I'll put this in the show notes on the actual uh, podcast, you know, we're live on YouTube and on Facebook, but I also will be up on Apple podcasts and Spotify. I'll have a link to three chord bourbon. I'll have a link to the masterclass for this Friday. You can see me struggle with Neil if you want a good laugh and I'll be sure to put up your, you know, the Benatar Geraldo uh, website as well. Uh, I appreciate it. You know, it's so much fun to always watch you play. I, I, we were kind of laughing. I, you probably remember this when you were at Starlight last time, you guys were being, there were bats on the stage that were given, you know, I don't, it was kind of a funny thing. You're like, what the heck is going on up there? But I love your rock and roll show. And I love your, your duo show. You guys did that. I've seen those both and they're great. Thank you. You know, the uh, Facebook page is good to go to you. If you go to the official Neil Geraldo, not that there's more than one of them, but the official Neil Geraldo page, Facebook is where I address most of the issues that have to do with music and creation and writing and all those things. Right. right. So that versus the combination page that we have, uh, Trisha and I, 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 the other one, I specifically work more with towards one-on-one -on -one with people. So that's a good one. With people. No, that's great. Stuff. And you talk about like your, what you're playing and you know, what kind of amps you're using your guitars mm -hmm. and all for people like me, they geek out on that kind of stuff. It's a ton of fun. So I, I appreciate you doing it. So well, happy to do it. So uh, 2021, are you get you when it gets back to normal, are you guys going to go back out on the road or what's your plans once this, once we all get out of collective, uh, you know, time out? I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I have to, I have to write more songs. Uh, I, I, I love writing and I love the studio so much. Um, I, I do also film composing. Uh, there was a film I was supposed to do, but I, it's not in, it's, it's the, the crew just got shut down, so we can't do anything. So uh, once that's coming around, I'll do that as well. Um, I'm not exactly sure, honestly. I, I'm just going to live in the moment, stay in the present, um, continue to do the things I do every day, which is write, read. And uh, I'm an avid reader. I, I, I try to tell people with the, one of the first things they say is they go, we well, want to write a song. How do you write a song? I go, read a book. Yeah. Read a book. Start reading. Read everything. You know, start nice. reading. It's nobody has the attention span, it seems like these days, doesn't it? Oh, no, no, man. I'll tell you what, you got to put that phone down, got to talk, yeah. have conversation, sip some bourbon, you know, do something. Yeah, it's actually, 21, of course. Oh, well, of course. We had uh, for years with my kids, and now they're 18 and 16, so this went away. But for years, we did electronic free Sunday because mm. I, I hated that it was like Pavlo's dog. We're like, the second they got bored or disinterested or whatever, they were on their phone. I mean, I, I mean, you could tell they didn't even know they were doing it. Yeah. And so that's, we instituted and said, look, it's going to be like 1945 in our house on Sunday until after dinner. So uh -huh. no TV, no internet. You want to have a conversation? You want to go anywhere? You want to go to a museum? We'll take you to a museum. You want to do, and they kind of complained about it for a little, but then they really got into it. And I had other parents steal it. And I was like, we should do that more often. It's better that's to be unplugged. Yeah, they got a they, you know they got a holiday for everything else. Why don't they have one for you know yeah like you say electronic free Friday or something you know what I mean or Sunday whatever day you know there's I want to mention this this good friend of mine uh, who I was talking about this piano player his name is Dennis Lewin he has a radio show which is phenomenal it's a classical radio show if you can get your children to sit down and listen to this show it is spectacular because he leads you on to a story of all the great composers, Mozart, Bach, you know, you name them, you know, Liszt, Franz Liszt, everybody. And this way the stories read out, it's like you're living inside it. He talks about it. And also he plays the music and the stories are just spectacular. Uh, it's, he's turning you on to classical music, Dennis Lewin. I'll uh, check it out, man. 
So check it out. It's phenomenal. I was a failed uh, piano player before picking up the guitar. So we did, you know, Clemente and Bach and Haydn and all of it. So well, he, he goes deep into the stories. And that's the thing I want the, the young people learn about the stories of these amazing classical composers. It, it, the interest, there's interesting stuff in there. It really is. Absolutely. You pull out of the capsule of pop music for a minute and you embrace some other styles and things, other lives. Well, I want to let you go because I, like I said, I know, and, and this is such a joy for me. You know, it's so fun with you. I always, guitar players I really like, I can always tell it's them. And years ago, there was a song with Kenny Loggins and um, <laughs> yeah. the Don't Fight It song. Yep. Dude, I knew that was you the second <laughs> I heard that, you yeah. know. The great players, they always just have that, you know, you can always tell it. Gee, I can tell when it's Wes Montgomery. Yeah. Um, we, we just lost Eddie Van Halen, which is very sad. I can, you can always tell when it's Eddie Van Halen. There's sure. just great guys. Well, you know, it's funny too, because when I, jo when I joined the Rick Derringer band, when I joined Derringer, I loved the way he played. I mean, spectacular. He was a phenomenal guitar player. And it was so inspirational playing him side, side by side with him. And I remember he had his rig set up. And, and, and it was a couple of Marshalls. And when I joined the band, I only had one guitar. He says, no, I got to help that out. Let me have you talk to BC Rich, get you something custom. And that's when I, that's why I started playing those because of him. So anyway, I had an SG, didn't have no amp. So I got these Marshalls like him and I had this rack and I set it up and he was playing through. I said, Rick, can I go through your, your setup? And you sound phenomenal. Let me try it. So I go through it and sound like him. I sounded like me. I wanted to sound like him. I couldn't sound like him. So there's, you know, you, this is the way you, it's life. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of the feel, person. right? It's the feel in the fingers and it's in your heart. That's what makes it, you know, guys are always trying to chase everybody else's sound. It's like, you're right. You can't replicate it. You, you can't, no matter what you do. It, it, it is what it is. And, and yeah, that's, that's good. Well, yourself, you. right? I, I really appreciate it, Neil. It's a total joy. When you're back on the road, I'll be in the audience. I'll see you Friday. You can pick on me. You can see how the <laughs> I don't up. pick on anybody. <laughs> We'll have fun. Come up with a great question. I'll, I'll have a great, qu I'll be so much more relaxed when it's not on the web and we're just having fun. It'll be great, but love, uh, love everything. Love the bourbon folks. Thanks. Be sure to check it out. Three chord bourbon.com is that, and you can actually look, they have a finder for you. So mm -hmm. see if you have it in your town, if you don't have it yet in your town, you can actually order it online. Yeah. Uh, if anybody needs to give me a Christmas gift, totally would be fine with getting three chord bourbon as a christmas Absolutely. gift we got, we got a 94 review for our 12 bar which is 12 year old uh reserve yeah it's going to be a long lonely winter here in kansas city neil not going anywhere not doing anything <laughs> you need some spirits to lift you up there you go you know right. where to go. <laughs> thanks so much neil total joy uh be safe hope your families be safe and i really appreciate it and and have a great day man thank you, you do the same thanks all for right. having me all right bye-bye bye so long <laughs>